Hi, I'm Lucas from Portugal and I will describe you three images. This is an image about flowers. The background is white and yellow. In the image there are three vases. A small yellow vase on the left, a big yellow one in the middle and a medium yellow one on the right. The big one have got 15 flowers in it and three on the table in front of it. The flowers have got white petals, green stalk and a yellow button in the middle of them. The second one is an image from Lisbon. On the right is an electric. An electric is like a train that moves on rails. It's yellow and runs on electricity. Near the electric there is a pink old building with domes and some people. On the left we can see a pink car, a tree and some people crossing the road. The third and last image. This is an image that shows a painting of Uporto, a town in north of Portugal. There we can see a river with two sides. On the left side we can see a lot of buildings with many colors, like yellow, brown or white, and trenders in their stalls with red roofs, ceiling flowers and fruit. On the right side we can see white family houses. In the river we can see a big boat with a white snail and white wine pipes inside. There are also three small boats floating and lots of birds flying above. Between the sides there is a grey bridge with a round arcade beneath it. Dragos Voda and the Bison Statue is a statuary monument located in Campulung, Moldova, in Suceava County. It was made of bronze by sculptor Ion Jalea in 1887-1983, being located the, in the central square of the Campulung, Moldova, near the House of Culture New Building. It was built in 1978. The statue depicts Prince Dragos Voda, the founder of Moldavia, riding a horse with a mason hand on the way to hit a bison that attacked him. It's land around 7 meters with 2 meters and 8 4 meters. The pedestal of the statue is made of concrete plate with travertine with the following dimension length 7 meters with 2 meters and 8 around 3 meters. On the pedestal of the statue there is, is an inscription with the name of the author Ion Jala in um, 1978. The artist masterfully captures the scene where Dragos Voda, riding on a first stallion, fights the fearsome and fierce bison, being ready to blow it in order to slay him. One can distinguish the image of young, but at the same time, mature man will build strong, will prepare to fight. His attitude is firm within the sculptor. It's uh, been surprised very well. His maximum concentration let it the moment live. He doesn't lose his sight, the bison eye. While with his left hand grabs and squeezes firmly the bride with whom he, he controls the stallion. His right hand is raised about his hand, holding stone mace, a powerful weapon distinct to help strong people. His face expression bears him. He is aware of the fact that only he does a heroic act, he would prove he is strong enough and brave to get the Moldavia's throne. At the same time, on his bright face, one can see human features, typically to a brave man with inner power, fine, calm, sure of himself, courage and daring. Wearing the Voyevodal clothing, Dragos Voda holding on tightly his back solidly, helping himself by his strong legs, wearing boots, impelling to the fight to the powerful horse, laying in fighting position, supporting itself on its back legs to horse has in the front legs raised and the body accurate permitting the future voivod to have an optimum position of attack the horse is aware of danger keeping its ears closed to his rich man at the same time the horse expects the bison's force at the, which he has a glass he feels that he is bride firmly by the
the voivod uh, strong and uh, on a sting arm. The special leather armor protects the horse from the bison strikes. The stat represented the moment when the bison strikes the horse with its strong horse. They Height and robustness of this animal with strong muscle is present impressively with its desire to fight till the death. Its large neck makes him trust his own force and accept unconditionally the fight. The strong head, its sharp horns are used as the main weapon. The stubbornness of fight is being underlined not only by its uh, distant nobles, but also by its own body attitude which is an attack position at the bird and its hardman make him look more glorious and impressive. The main characteristic of his statuary monument is given by the way the dynamism of the scene was uh, reproduced. It. It's a page of your national history depicted from the history of establishment of Moldavia. Hello, I am Emil and I will describe you the Wooden Spoons Museum. Bukovina is where the wood was in Nobel for centuries, being used for building houses or for making furniture, decorative items, household utilities, hunting or fishing. Yuan Tsugui House Museum gathered over 300 exhibits in a prestigious collection of carved wooden spoons. It is considered to be the largest collection of this kind in the world. The collection value is given not only by the antiquity of some authentic exponents, over 200 years old, but also for their diversity, for their artistic, popular and, and, and ethnographic value. Creators choose wood as a working material as this easily processed and it is perceived as pleasantly warm and velvety. The simple themes of all this popular jewelry are quite generous. Zoomorphic art motifs are represented by the fish, the deer, the doe, and the snake. Floral motifs are symbol of love and harmony. We can admire works with cherry flower, the delways, and daisy. Special spoons with astral motifs are the sun and the stars. The diversity of symbols in these pieces of art amazes us through the depth of message sent. Will makes the connection with cosmic unity specifying at the same time the changes cyclicity. The wheel sculpted on the wooden spoons represents the same wheel from the wooden ox cart or wooden mill. It sustains the circular part without the wheel cannot function. Spiral shape motifs symbolizes the soul strip in the huge infinite of spirals galaxy. It makes the link between the earth and the sky. A special place have ship fold on large spoons which base this their utility represent also an outstanding artistic achievement that combine utility with beauty. Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm going to present the bust of George Enescu. On the first floor of the House of Culture in our city Campulu Moldovenesc, on one of the halls, one can find Romanian music genius bust, that of George Enescu, an exceptional artistic creation made by the well-known sculptor Oscar Hahn one great landmark in the Romanian modern sculpture. George Enescu works exceeded Romanian borders due to his musical genius. The image presented by the sculptor Oscar Hahn has the features of a handsome man, mature, and his face expressions show obvious melancholy. It is a cold beauty from metaphysical essence, a beauty that cannot be perceived with our senses because it exceeds the reality. Watching him, one realized that he is face to face with the image of a genius, a musical genius, a free, strong, bondless man. All true, he seems to be sad. At a closer look, one can discover his generosity, full of warmth that was due to his noble feelings and his unbounded love for music. This is a proof of his emotions transposing into the soul. His deep look is that of a rigorous artist, demanding harsh, unyielding what it comes to perfection. His lips, hairstyle, clothing, highlight the same strictness, the same exigency that characterizes him, which made him once again to be respected and appreciated. His great force he transmits us through the years of academic model of a gifted artist full of positive attitude towards work and seriousness. 
and is considered to be the Romanian symbol of the creative genius. In gratitude and great appreciation for his work and talent, the most precious musical event in our country is being called George Enescu International Festival. Dominik Skutecki Art Love Framework. Dominik Skutecki was born on 14th February in Gajari and died the 13th March in 1921 in Banska Bystrica. A Slovak painter of Jewish origin is considered one of our most important painters of the last third of the 19th and early 20th centuries. He is the author of general paintings, landscape paintings and portraits. He worked in Munich, Venice and Vienna. Since 1853 he lived in Vienna, where he was taught by sculptor Meixner in the years 1865 to 1866. He attended preparatory school of painting the Vienna Academy in the years 1866 to 1867. He studied with professors Wurzinger, Egerta and Blas, the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, was studying in the School of Historical Painting in Venice from 1867 to 1870. He spent several years in Italy. He was very talented in art and results in superior culture. From Venetian style passed to celebrate Slovak simple man. From Venice in 1889 he returned to Slovakia settled in Banska Bystrica where he lived for 32 years in a beautiful Venetian villa where he also had a studio, which is now a gallery Skuteckého, with its permanent exhibition dominated by the image of a lady with a red umbrella. He created a number of landscape paintings of central Slovakia, portraits of important personalities of the city and workers in the area of copper mills in Banska Bystrica. Market in Banska Bystrica. Oil on canvas. In the painting, we can see a dominant figure in the foreground. It's a dark-haired, well-dressed lady with a red parasol on her shoulder. She is wearing a black scarf around her neck and a long, light brown coat. Next to her is standing a 10-year-old girl who is also dressed elegantly. She is wearing a hat. We can't see the girl's face because she is turned back, probably looking at the kids playing on the floor behind the lady's back. The lady with the umbrella's body is turned to the audience and she is looking over her shoulder at the female vendors. The lady is extending her hand to the florist on her left. The lady is standing near a large tent with sweets covered with a canvas roof. There are two young children in front of the stand. They are about five or six years old. There is a girl in a white dress and a boy wearing a traditional boy's dress with a cap on his head. Female and male vendors are sitting behind and next to the stand offering their goods. They are dressed in traditional costumes. In the background we can see a part of the plea column on the square in Banska Bystrica, the corner of Javier Catholic Church and in the very back there are some buildings on the square opening into Kapitulska Street in Banska Bystrica. It is a beautiful sunny day, perfect for a stroll around the market. The lady is talking to the female vendors offering their goods. The vendors are in a good mood. The lady and the children are dressed as townspeople, the vendors are dressed as villagers. The color scheme is earthy. There are all shades of brown and gray, dominated by the red lady's parasol unfolded and laid on her shoulder. The painting market in Banska Bystrica became one of the most exhibited works of the author. Visitors can see it in the Central Slovakian Gallery in the Villa of Dominik Skutecki in Banska Bystrica. The lady is most probably the painter's wife, Mrs. Skutecka, at that time the mother of three children, according to her black hair, her style profile. Mrs. Skutecka is painting in one of his earlier pictures owned by a private collector. 
The final, the most famous picture is owned by the Central Slovakian Gallery is Margita Holeshova, artist's model. Ludovic Fula was born on 27th February 1902 in Rožamberok and died on 2nd April 1980 in Bratislava. He attended grammar school in Rožamberok, School of Commerce in Dolny Kubin in Bratislava and he also studied fine arts in Prague. Ludovic Fula was a Slovak painter, graphic artist, illustrator, stage designer and art teacher at the Academy of Fine Arts in Bratislava. He is considered one of the most important figures of Slovak creative art in the 20th century. He was one of the founders of modern painting and graphic art in Slovakia. Ludovic Fula together with M. Galanta were inspired by the avant-garde of the 20th century, especially the creation of Picasso, Matisse and Cezanne. He lived in Martin, Žilina and after the death of his wife in Rožamberak, directly in the gallery, where he also had a flat, then he lived in Bratislava. His work focused on Slovak folk art. Ludovic Fula illustrated Slovak folk fairy tales by Pavel Dobczynski. The gallery of Ludovic Fula in Rzemberak was built by the state as a gift for the artist's life's work. Ludovic Fula was awarded the title of national artist in 1963. The author's motto is I knew that if one asks a lot of himself, he will accomplish at least something. If he asks a little, he might not accomplish anything. Song and Labor, Oil Canvas, 1934-35. This artwork won the Grand Prix at the Paris World Exhibition in 1937. The tapestry based on, on this image was created and it was awarded a gold medal at the Expo in Brussels in 1958. The image has a stripe composition and it is divided into three equal stripes. Each stripe represents a different story. The lower stripe shows a plugman plugging the field with two oxen. The oxen face the well located on the left, the oxen are in the middle and the plugman with the plow is on the right. The lowest stripe's background is dominated by the brown color, the light brown in the center, and in some measure also red and green. These colors are the colors of the wall picture. In the middle stripe there are two figures, a man and a woman, standing back to back, working on the field, digging, hoeing, and we can also see a few bags of potatoes there. Alongside the stripe we can see a row of grey houses on both sides, behind the couple there are some meadows and three trees are in the center. The color scheme is brown, grey, light brown and red with green. In the upper stripe there is an allegorical figure, a shepherd floating in the air. It's a song, a male figure in Lipto's ski costume, with a pipe or a whistle, pacing by the work and working people. On the right, there are some sheep browsing in the meadow by a shepherd's hut and on the left, there is the city skyline, the church. This trap is dominated by the green color in the center, surrounding the allegorical figures in the background and the red color on both sides of the stripes. This painting is one of the best works of the author. It's a celebration of peasant labor and Slovak people. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter who has achieved great international popularity. Her full name was Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. She was born on 6th of July 1907 
in Mexico and died on 13th of July 1954 in Mexico at the age of 47. Mexican culture and tradition are important in her work, which has been sometimes characterized as naive art of folk art. Her work has also been described as surrealist and in 1938 Andre Breton principal initiator of the Surrealist movement, described Kahlo's art as a ribbon around a bomb. Frida rejected the Surrealist label imposed by Breton, as she argued that her work reflected more of her reality than her dreams. Her life was marked by physical suffering, started with the polio contracted at the age of five, and worsened by her life-dominating event occurred in 1925. A bus accident caused severe injuries to her body, owing to a pole that pierced her from the stomach to the pelvis. The medicine of her time tortured her body with surgical operations 32, throughout her life corsets of different kinds and mechanical stretching systems. Lots of her works were painted laying in the bed. She created more than 200 paintings, mainly portraits. She had a great love, Diego Rivera. She married twice with this man and dedicated to him a passionate diary. But also a lot of lovers, men and women. Because of this physical conditions, Frida could not have children, and this was devastating for her. Frida Kahlo passed away at her beloved Bull House. She was publicly reported to die of a pulmonary embolism, but there are speculations which was saying she died of a possible suicide. The last entry in her diary was, I hope the end is joyful and I hope I will never come back. Her coffin was exhibited in the Palace of Arts in Mexico City. The communists insisted on draping a red flag over her coffin, which caused a nationwide scandal. Frida wished to be cremated and the urn to be exhibited at her birthplace, La Casa Azul, which turned into a gallery. Frida Kahlo's fame has been growing after her death. Her Blue House was opened as a museum in the year of 1958. In 1970s, the interest on her work and life are renewed due to the feminist movement, since she was viewed as an icon of a female creativity. Madonna loves her style of works and she is a major color collector because she identifies with the pain and the grief. A Hollywood blockbuster based on her life was made in 2002. Self-portrait Frida Kahlo with necklace and thorns. In this oil painting, Frida paints herself in a frontal pose to enhance the immediacy of her presence. She has unraveled Christ's crown of thorns and wears it as a necklace, presenting herself as a Christian martyr. The thorns digging into her neck are symbolic of the pain she still feels over her divorce from Diego. Hanging from the thorny necklace is a dead hummingbird whose outstretched wings echo Frida's joint eyebrows. In Mexican folk tradition, dead hummingbirds were used as a charms to bring luck in love. Over her left shoulder, the black cat a symbol of bad luck and death, waits to pounce on the hummingbird. Over her right shoulder, the symbol of devil, her pet monkey, a gift from Diego. Around her hair, butterflies represent the resurrection. Once again, Frida uses a wall of large green and yellow tropical paint leaves as the background. The expression of her face is stern picked out by the white joint eyebrows or dark eyes. The skin of the face and neck are brown. 
Her shoulders and chest are dressed in a white blouse. Black monkey and black cat on her shoulder are expressing nothing positive but misery, disease and loneliness. The author of Saint Barbara by Master Paul of Levocha in Banska Bystrica. The oldest part of Banska Bystrica, the area of the town castle, is created by several religious and secular monuments. The altar is in the parish church of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary in Banska Bystrica. The church of the Assumption of Virgin Mary was built in the 13th century in a Romanesque style. The most famous chapel is dedicated to St. Barbara, to patrons of miners. The altar comes from the workshop of Master Paul of Levocha from 1504. It is located in the chapel of the north side of the church. It is almost 10 meters high and it is the prototype of the main altar of the church of St. James in Levocha, which was also created by Master Paul. The master made the altar a request of Krakow and Levocha, Burgess Jan Torzo, who settled in Banska Bystrica at the end of the 15th century and both are hired local mines. In the middle of the cabinet of the altar is a statue of the Virgin Mary with Jesus. Saint Hieron, next to her, on the left is Saint Jerome, doctor of the church, and on the right is Saint Barbara, the patroness of miners. Below that is a sculpture of Christ Almighty with 14 helpers in need. The crucifixion of St. Peter is depicted on the left side of the altar. Below that we can see the execution of 10,000 martyrs and lower the execution of St. Barbara. On the right side of the altar, St. Leona frees the captives. It is followed by a scene of the martyrdom of St. Ursula. In the northern chapel is located copper baptismal font. Master Jodok, masterpiece from 1475, Similar work is in Wroclaw, Poland. The church is a national monument.
description of a painting. Technical data. The author's name is Velázquez, Diego Rodríguez de Silva y Velázquez. He was born in Sevilla in 1599 and he died in Madrid in 1660. The title of the work is La Reina Mariana de Austria, Queen Mariana of Austria. The date it was painted is between 1653 and 1655. The size is 234.2 by 132 centimeters. The technique is oil. The support is canvas. The stylistic period is Spanish Baroque. The location is in Museo del Prado, in Madrid. Subject and theme. This is a full figure portrait of the Queen of Spain, Mariana of Austria, the daughter of the Emperor Ferdinand III and Maria of Hungary. She married Philip IV, King of Spain, in 1649, when she was 15. In this portrait, the Queen was 18 years old. General overview. The queen is in the foreground standing in the center of the picture and occupies almost the entire canvas or frame. Mariana's body is slightly turned to the right edge of the painting but she is looking straight at the viewer. Queen Mariana is extending her right arm towards a chair back. In her left extended hand she holds a white handkerchief. There is no much space in the background. Behind the queen, on the right side of the painting, at 3 o'clock, there is a clock on a table with a red cloth. Above the queen, there is a luxury curtain drawn towards the left that occupies the upper part of the painting. Details, form and colors. The main feature of the portrait is elaborate clothing, the surprising shape of the dress and the amazing hairstyle befitting a queen. The queen's hairstyle, probably a wig, is three times larger than the head of the queen. It's bigger than a motorcycle helmet. It's like a semicircle of curls that surround her head. Ten ringlets on each side go from the center of the head to the cheeks and end up having a red ribbon and golden adornments. A gold brooch and a large white and red feather decorate the right side of the heart, though. The queen is wearing a spectacular dress. The top is very tight, with a circular neckline made of tulle, a kind of transparent and soft fabric, edged with a gold border and embroideries. It has a very narrow waist. It has elegant white sleeves embroidered with silver threads to decorate it. The skirt is huge more or less one meter and a half wide, so the queen can dress her arms on it. Probably the skirt is made of soft, dark silk fabric. Many silver strips or laces are embroidered to the skirt. In both hands, she's wearing gold rings and gold bracelets, and her wrist with a red ribbon tied to them. The queen's face is made up very lightly, wearing blush on the cheeks and red lipstick. Focus on the style. This is a portrait of the court painted in a studio. It does not reflect spontaneity. The queen seems a bit stiff, uncomfortable, and a little sad. Just imagine her 18 years old, married to a man 19 years older than her, dressed in an uncomfortable and narrow top, an enormous skirt, and with a huge, heavy wig that barely allows her to move naturally. The portrait marks a high point in the evolution of the artist's work as a core portraitist. One of the features of Velázquez painting is his realistic style, his free and modern brush talk, and his ability to use different tones, combining blacks, grays, silvers, and reds. Description of a painting. Technical data. 
The author's name is Sorolla, Joaquín Sorolla. The title of the work is Paseando Orillas del Mar, Walk on the Beach. The date it was painted is 1909. The size is 205 by 200 centimeters. The technique is oil. The support is canvas. The stylistic period is Spanish Impressionism. The location is Museo Sorolla, Madrid. Subject and theme. This painting shows the wife and the eldest daughter of the painter, walking on the beach known as El Cabañal in his hometown of Valencia. General overview. Both women are in the center of the painting. They fill almost the whole picture. Soria's daughter is on the right side of canvas and his wife on the left side. Both women are walking on the shore towards the right. They are dressed in long white gowns. In the background, the sea is blown slightly by the breeze, forming a long wave, but the horizon is not visible. The turquoise color of the water contrasts with the color of the sun. The sun lights the women from the left side of the picture diagonally. Details, form and colors. The woman on the left. She is wearing a straw hat decorated with purple flowers with a greenish transparent veil flowing with the wind over it and her face. With her hand on her hat, she stops it from being blown by the wind. Her white long dress has long sleeves rolled up. She is also carrying a jacket hanging on the left arm. She is wearing a white belt and white low heel shoes. In her left hand, she is holding a white open umbrella downwards. The woman on the right. She is looking straight at the viewer. In her right hand, she is holding a straw hat decorated with blue and purple flowers. Her long white dress is finished by a stand-up collar and long chiffon sleeves. She is wearing brown leather shoes. In this painting, the artist transmits the calm of a Mediterranean summer evening by the sea and the lazy summer days of upper-class people, early 20th century. The Mediterranean light and the breeze coming from the sea, portrayed in the flowing clouds and sea waves, makes these women find freshness when walking calmly along the seashore. Focus on the style. The picture marks a high point in the evolution of the Impressionist style in Spain. Impressionism consists in quick, loose brush strokes and their main focus was the realistic impression of light falling on the subjects and objects of the painting. Impressionist painters would often paint without studying a subject, but would simply sketch and paint, allowing themselves complete artistic freedom. The majority of the celebrated Impressionist painters came from France, where the style had developed. Claude Monet, Paul Cézanne and Edouard Manet were all French Impressionists. However, Spain had its own brand in the form of Joaquín Sorolla from Valencia. Sorolla painted many fantastic representations of Spanish people under the Spanish sun. Description of a painting. Technical data. The author's name is Salvador Dalí. The title of the work is La Persistencia de la Memoria, The Persistence of Memory. The date it was painted is 1931. The size is 24 centimeters by 33 centimeters. Technique, oil. Support, canvas. The stylistic period, surrealism, modern art. Location, it's in MoMA, Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Subject and theme. This is a painting of a landscape. It shows Al Cap de Creus on the coast of Catalonia. That is home at sunset. However, Dalí called this kind of paintings hand-painted dream photographs. He rendered his fantastic visions with meticulous verisimilitude 
giving the representations of a dreams a tangible and credible appearance. Hard objects become inexplicably limp, watches and time bent, and metal attracts and like rotting meat. General overview. In the background, we can see the beach, the sea, and the distant cliffs. There is no wind nor waves. A dead calm fills the air. On the left, there is a big rectangular flat overing platform by the sea. Coming from the background, in the bottom left-hand corner at 9 o'clock is something like a table or platform. On the table, there is a dead olive tree branch with a soft melting pocket watch hanging on it. The watch is completely bent. In the foreground, on the table, there are two more soft pocket watches. One of them with a golden frame is bent on the edge of the table. The second one is not melting, but covered with ants. Right in the middle of the painting, there is a monstrous limp and soft creature. It looks like a head or a face in a profile with long eyelashes. Something like a tongue is oozing from its nose like a fat snail. On this strange creature, there is another silver framed soft watch. Details. Watches look like melting ice cream or a melting candle. Here, time must lose all meaning. The soft watches are an unconscious symbol of the relativity of space and time. This interpretation suggests that Dali was incorporating and understanding Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. Dali replied that the soft watches were not inspired by the theory of relativity. By the surrealist perception, those limb watches are as soft as overripe cheese. In the least phrase, watches are the camembert of time. Ants is a common theme in the least work and represent the K, particularly when they attack a gold watch and become grotesquely organic. The year before this picture was painted, Dali formulated this paranoia-critical method, cultivating self-induced psychotic hallucinations in order to create art. He said, The difference between a madman and me is that I'm not mad. Dali paints dreams. Focus on the style. Surrealism is a cultural movement that began in the early 1920s and is best known for its visual artworks and writings. The aim was to resolve the previously contradictory conditions of dream and reality. Artists painted unnerving illogical scenes with photographic precision, created strange creatures from everyday objects and developed painting techniques that allowed the unconscious to express itself. Description of a sculpture. Technical data. The author's name is Antoni Tapias. The title of the work is Humanaja Picasso, Tribute to Picasso. The date when it was painted is 1983. The size is 4 by 4 by 4 meters. The technique is modern sculpture. The stylistic period is informalism and abstraction. And the location is Passeig de Picasso in Barcelona. Subject and theme. This is a sculpture created by the artist Antoni Tapias. The work of art was completed in 1983, after the artist was asked to produce the piece of work by the Barcelona City Council in order to commemorate the centenary of Picasso's birth in 1981. The sculpture is in Passeig Picasso, an avenue that links the Santa Maria del Mar neighborhood with Ciutadella Park. General overview. 
The main element is a large glass cube measuring four meters along each side with water pouring over the cube. It seems to emerge from a square pool measuring 11 meters along each edge that acts as a base. The cube contains a sculpture made up with a piece of furniture in a modernist style that is a sofa, mirror, and cupboard combined, cut through by iron beams painted white, chairs piled on top of each other, tied together with ropes, white blankets, or pieces of fabric and two crisscross rectangles made also with iron beams. It can be described as a monument fountain. The sculpture is outdoors in a public place, which provides natural light. The light and the weather conditions change the feelings transmitted by the sculpture. Details. Certain sentences attributed to Picasso are written on the blankets or pieces of fabric, such as A painting is not intended to decorate a living room, but is instead a weapon of attack and defense against the enemy. A declaration of principles that Tapies adopts as his own in this monument. Therefore, the public is surprised by the sculpture, which is difficult to understand and does not seek beauty. To sum up, one can say that this sculpture will leave nobody indifferent. There is no happy medium. You love it or you don't like it at all. Focus on the style. Tapias started as a surrealist painter. His early works were influenced by Paul Klee and Joan Miró, but soon became an informal artist working in a style known as Pintura Materica, in which non-artistic materials are incorporated into the paintings. Tapias was one of the first to create serious art in this way. He added clay and marble dust to his paint and used waste paper, string and grass. Tapias was a Catalan Spanish painter, sculptor, and art theorist who became one of the most famous European artists of his generation. Hello, I am Bulut. I'm going to describe for you Salk Roman Road. There is an ancient road which is made from stone and located in the mountain parts of Salk village, which has 15 km distance to the city center of Tarsus. The road has 3 meters width and 3 km legends. There are railings around the Roman Road to keep the wages in the road. In addition, also, there are Roman tombs and inscriptions around, around the road. It is estimated that the arched structure on the road may be a border gate or triple arch. The arched structure has 5.20 meters height and 8.18 width. The road has relation with ancient ruins in Bozach and Kretulach. Saint Paul as well. Saint Paul, who is an important figure in the Christian world, was born in Tarsus. There is a water well which is believed to be near the Saint Paul's house. It is believed that water in the well has some healing qualities. It's located in 200 meters distance to the ancient road in the city center of Tarsus. This place is visited by millions of Christians for religious reasons. It's under the government protection today. Hello, I am Noor. I describe two statues in the project. First, Shahmaran statue. Second, Karbaz Guay Milia Monuments. First, Shahmaran statue. 
The statue is titled Shahmaran. The statue is located in Tarsus in the south of Turkey. Statue believed to live in Tarsus explains Shahmaran. According to the legend, the story relates the events of a young man by the name of Kansap and Shahmaran, the king of the snakes, a creature with a human head and snake's body. The tale is a story of close friendship, a deep secret and betrayal that ends in death. The story began when Kansap, the woodcutter, is lowered into a well by a group of friends to get honey. Thus, he finds himself in Shahmaran's underground world where he decides to stay due to his friends abandoning him. Snakes capture him and he appears before Shahmaran himself. Kansap explains it how he come to be there upon which Shahmaran shares a secret with the young man. Kansap is then forced to stay for fear that the secret would be told to those living above. After a very long period of time, Shahmaran gives into the pleadings of the young man to realize back to his own world. He is advised not to tell of what he has seen or to go to his baths. It was said that if he should enter the baths, his skin would turn the snake scales. Kansap returns to his own world and for many years tells no one of the events take to palace. However, the country's ruler become ill and Shahmaran is blamed for the illness. Soldiers began to look for anyone who has seen Shahmaran. The ruler men begin to take people one by one to the bed where they are are to wash themselves in order to see who knows more than what they are telling. Kansap hides for fear of this test but is ultimately captured and returned to the city. When he was has in the bed, his skin turns to snakes, scales and the screed is thus brought to light. The man is then porcelated reveal to get Shahmaran's hiding palace. The king of snakes is captured very quickly, taken to the bed, cut into three pieces and sent to the ruler. The conviv convalescent king makes Kansap vizier, but none of the snakes in the world know it and they will attack all the people when they learn. This legendary work was made at Bay Aminabirika Ipek Bayrak between 1980-1985. The statue is surrounded by snakes' heads. This made statue, it is a legendary work of art identified with Tarsus. This statue was described by Remzien Rakalper. Second statue, Karbalukuay Milia Monument. The statue is titled Karbalukuay Milia Monument. The monument located Gülek in Tarsus, south of Turkey, is the historical symbol of the event in 1920. The statue is made up of a woman, a man and flags which is the subject of Tarsus history. When we approach the statue, we see you standing on stones symbolizing the route about 2 meters above the ground. The statue consists of the bronze color mixture and symbolizes victory. The statue symbolizes male Kumcu Veli and Mrs. Gülek Lahatice. If we will introduce the Kumcu Veli and Gülek Lahatice as a result of pressure of Kuwai Milliye, the, the French understood that can stay in Pozantza. They wanted to go to Mersin by passing through Namrun and Gözne. The French were set on the route and by change take, took to Kumjuveli and Gülek Lahatice as guides. At the insist of the Kumjuveli, the trail follows the path and approaches Karboazı. In the meantime, Gülek Lahatice brought news to Gülek and everyone went to ambush before the French arrived. Enemy escaped because of fire. For this reason, the heroes 
and this victory immortalized by being constructed in the Kuai Milie. This statue was described by Remzenur Akalpaş. Hello, my name is Sena and I will tell Kutam Sholu Suleyman Shah's story. He is founder of an Italian Seleuk state. Sometimes be drawn with founder of Ottoman Empire, Osman Bey's grandfather. He is Arslan Yabgut's grandson and Kutamış Bey's son. He conquers Anatolia and he is Turkish valiant that makes Anatolia a Turkish dorm. He joins the Malazgirt war with Alparslan. He shows heroism in the war. After the war, Sultan Alparslan commissioned his glorious commander with the conquest of Anatolia. Suleiman Bey enters the conquest movement with his hero soldiers. He makes tremendous conquest within a few years. He sent the great commanders like Artuk, Tutush, Saltuk Bey, to various regions with Raider Sukadran. They win the victorious and they transform Anatolia into Turkish homeland. An Italian conquering army win the war with Byzantine army and they descend to the Marmara coast. Suleiman Bey conquers to the old central Anatolia with Konya. In 1075, he captures an important Byzantine city, Iznik. All the Islamic lands meet with joy to Suleiman Bey's conquest in Anatolia. In 1077, Sultan, Sultan Malik Shah declares to Suleiman Bey as the Anatolia Sultan. So, the Anatolian Seleuk state is on the stage of history. Suleiman Bey makes king what he wants in the Byzantine Empire. Suleiman Bey is so good against his soldiers and people. Non-Muslim people love him too. Local people are rich, but when Suleiman Shah comes to their city, they are happy and peaceful. As conquests continue, the Turkish people come and settle to conquered lands. Tens of thousands of Turkish people start to migrate to Anatolia. Suleiman Bey captures Kapıdağ Peninsula, Hellespont and Asia Coast. The parts up to the Bosporus size earlier. According to the agreement made in 1081, it exists by the Byzantines that the Seljuk, Seljuks have Anatolia until the Marmara coast. Suleiman Shah enters Chukurova in 1082 and the first he conquers Tarsus. In 1083, mainly in Adana, he takes control of all Silesia lands. The greatest desire of Suleiman Shah is to capture Antioch. For this purpose, he leaves. He keeps the operation secret. For 12 days, the army advanced by staying in the daytime and traveling in night. In December 13, 1084, he goes out of the way and takes the city with a sudden attack. He turns the big church of city to a mosque. The city has rebuilt from the beginning. Later, he sends his commanders to various regions. Buldacı Bey conquers Kahraman Maraş, Elbistan, Güksun and Bes Besni Castle and takes these regions in 1085. At this time, Çaka Bey conquers Izmir and builds a large navy in the Gulf of Izmir. He is the founder of the first naval forces of Seljuk state. 
Gümüştekin Bey conquers the environs of Şanlıurfa and Gaziantep. Towards 1085, all the principalities bring together and a strong state burns in Anatolia. All Anatolia passed by the Turks. Melik Şah's brother Sultan Tutuş also fall in rain desire. With the aim of establishing a state in Syria, he starts to attack right and left. Süleyman Shah, on purpose to stop these movements of Sultan Tutuş, walks on Tutuş with his army. Two armies faces on 5 June 1086 near Aleppo. Some soldiers leave the line of Süleyman Shah and cross the other side. The army of Süleyman Shah is crafts. He marches in the war. Hello, my name is Sena and I will tell you Karacaoğlan legend. It is believed to have been burned in 1606 and died in 1679 or 1689. There is no exact information about his life. According to the investigations and research, he lived in 17th century. Different opinions have been put forward about where he is from. From these views and from his poems, he was born in Chukurva and lived among Turkmen tribes. His name is Smile in some sources, Halid and Hasan in some of his poems. According to the memories of Akshay ile Hoca Hamdi Efendi, Karacaoğlan is an orphan. He immigrated at a young age because of fear of getting married with an ugly girl and being a lifelong soldier. There are poems that indicate that he took two sisters with him, that he went to Bursa and even to Istanbul. Again, according to his poems, he became a host in Bursa and he saw his dead child. It is also thought that he traveled various provinces of Anatolia, went to Rumelia, went to Egypt and Tripoli. Most of his life spent in Chukurova, Maraş, Gaziantep. Like the place of birth, the place of death is also unknown. From his poetry, it seems that he lived very long. According to the memories of Hoca Hamdi Efendi, he died at the age of 96 at the Jezal Plateau in Marash. According to the le uh, latest findings, it is thought that his tomb is located at the place called Karacaoğlan Tepesi in Çukur village of Mut, the street of Icha. The theme, which is evident in his poems, is nature and love. Separation, dignity, longing, that is another theme in his poetry. He expresses his feelings in a realistic way. He is leaning on the truth. According to him, as long as lives, person should receive what she get, what she can get from her life and sh she should enjoy her heart as she wishes. The source of his love of life is his passion for love and nature. He praises to the beauties and valiants. He calls the mountains he thinks are his partner. For the first time in his poem, the names of the lovers are said, Elif, Ansha, Zeynep, Hürü, Dondu, Döne, Esma, Emine, Hatice. He was shot while some of them were filling the water at the beginning of spring, some of them went to the water on their shoulders, some of them spread and spread the carpets. His point of view to the girl and the girl brings novelty to the poetry of love and has an impressive character in his tradition. Even if he does not place an important place in the concept of God and the theme of religion-related poetry, this approach has also brought a different perspective to his own poetry tradition and has been an impressive guid for the next generations. Karacaoğlan whose poems have been searched since 1920 and complete and published, has passed over 500 of poems to written sources.